<laughs> what is up, my people? This week, we're going to talk about a question that I get a lot, which is, how did you get into real estate? I'm going to tell you that story, and I'm going to tell you about the first three deals that I bought and sold in real estate and how they went. Let's go. How did I get into real estate? Well, uh, trial by fire. Uh, I, I would say the answer is I don't really know. I was in a family business before this and it translates directly to real estate. So it was really a seamless transition. And when you hear what that was, you will know that's a joke. I was a legal video specialist and you probably don't know what that means, but right now I'm in front of the camera in my other job, I was behind the camera and I did video depositions for law firms and accident recreations and trial presentation. And it was good and I was making really good money. It just didn't fulfill me. It just wasn't my thing long term. And I just felt unfulfilled and I needed my thing. So how real estate and why real estate? Well, great question. I'm really handy. I was uh, raised kind of by my grandpa on a farm and he was a man's man and just knew how to fix everything. And you know, you don't pay anybody to fix anything. You do it yourself. And I was just raised around that. So it was really, really handy. And I had bought a house myself, fixed it up. Um, and I worked for a contractor when I was a teenager and I actually toured in a band. And of course, when you tour in a band, you're broke. When you're off of tour, you do something for work. And I was given the opportunity to work for a contractor in our town, ironically building my parents' house. So I had a really good year and a half of experience doing some very hard labor, but I learned a lot about the process of building a house. So my wife and I had bought a house, we had fixed it up, we were really um, you know, comfortable with this, the, the renovation side of a house, but I really liked the idea with real estate of buying a house and then making a lot of money in theory in one transaction. So I really liked that, I knew I was handy, didn't know anything about a deed or a mortgage or the legal process of buying a property, but I knew how to fix one up. So that's why we picked real estate. If you are watching this video and you're new, uh, you've probably already seen all the other YouTube videos where they say you should wholesale houses and get into wholesaling real estate. And I didn't even know what that was. I knew how to fix up a house, but I didn't know about buying one and really never touching it and then reselling it. And I really liked that idea. So I get all hyped up. This is, December of 2014. And I get all hyped up. I'm, you know, it's winter. I'm spending a lot of time inside and I'm hyped up on all these YouTube videos. So I start implementing this process and I decide January of 2015, we're going to go into real estate. That's what we're going to do. And here's how we're going to do it. We, we're going to get these bandit signs, these yard signs that are blank. And we're going to get these big Sharpies at Lowe's and we're going to write, we buy houses and we're going to get a free Google number. And I'm not knocking all this. It still works today but we're gonna get a free Google number. We're gonna put that on there and we're gonna put cash for houses and we buy houses on these signs. We're gonna place them at street corners in the areas we want to buy in. We're even gonna do a Craigslist ad. Yes, I know that dates me a little bit, but back then and maybe today in some markets, it still works. So we do this Craigslist ad, we do all these signs and guess what happens? The phone number starts ringing and people actually have houses they want to sell. And to my dismay, they are actually calling me. So we get this property, this lady calls. Deal number one is 2026 18th Avenue, Parkersburg, West Virginia. I'll never forget this house till the day I die. So this is what happens. The lady calls us, she needs to sell the house. She's going through a divorce. She's got, it's her and her one son. She doesn't love the idea of living in the same neighborhood in the same town as her now ex and she wants to move home to Pittsburgh, I believe. We go and look at the house. Um, I have really no idea what I'm doing, but I've just heard on these videos that you know, you're know you supposed to offer 70% after repair value, minus repairs, then 70%. That's where you should offer. So we look at this house on Zillow. We use that for our comps and Zillow says it's worth like $130,000. I go to the house, Molly and I walk through the house and we make an offer and I, I will never forget it. I, I knew I had to buy deep. So I offer her $75,000 and I said, I, I know like this is probably not what you're expecting to hear, but I have to offer you $75,000 based on the condition of the house and I can close as is and, you know, close on your time frame. To my amazement, she said, can you do 80,000? And I was freaking out because I'm like, 
holy cow, this is actually happening. I don't even have a contract. I, I literally drove to Staples. I called a friend and said, okay, I need, I, I've, I've got to put earnest money down. I'm going to go to an ATM. I've got to get this contract printed out at Staples. We're not leaving here until we get a contract. And we do that. We get the house under contract after this chaotic evening. I just knew it was deep enough. So I'm all excited and we've got this house and we market this house totally as is. We clean it up. We clean it out. I think we power washed it. We had $7,600 in total expenses, including the interest that we paid our private investor on this house, including that interest, we had 7,600 bucks in it. We listed it for 141,900, bought it for 80. Well, two failed contracts and a guy calls me and says, hey, I've wanted to live in this neighborhood my entire life. I know the exact house and I'll pay you your asking. And we sold that house totally as is without a realtor for sale by owner. And after expenses and concessions from closing costs, we netted $44,338.88. At that point, I'm like, well, I think we've definitely found our career because we're going to be rich and we need to look at new cars and they probably should have spinners and airbags and whatever else cool that they should have because we're going to be rich. You will see where this sarcasm is going. Deal number two. I did sell a house on my first deal. Totally as is. I made 44,000 bucks. So yes, wholesaling houses works. Side plug. Deal number two. This is going to be our first flip. We buy a house in our hometown of Ripley, West Virginia, 113 West Virginia Avenue. We bought it as a foreclosure. We used a friend of ours who is a realtor. We bought the house for $45,000. This is March of 2015. So this is deal number two. And um, we were going to spend $20,000 on the house. We were going to fix it up ourselves, do the paint ourselves, the flooring ourselves. I had a very good friend who came in as the contractor and helped me do the house. We had a lot of fun. We learned a lot and we spent 20,000 bucks. So all in, when we bought the house at 45,000, we had a total of $64,353.30 invested in that deal after our renovations and purchase. After commissions and after closing cost assistance, we sold the house for a net of $91,793.14 for a profit of $27,439.84. So if you do the math, in our first two deals, we did $71,773.72 in profit. We were freaking out, is all I'm gonna tell you, because we're really good at this, right? We're super good at this. My sarcasm is stacking. You'll get to have fun with where this is going. Deal number three, pride goes before the fall. Well, deal number three was a house in Vienna, West Virginia. We bought deal number three, which was 405 53rd Street, Vienna, West Virginia, for $85,000, March 11th of 2015. Keep that in mind. Our plan was that we were gonna completely fix this house up, like totally renovate it. It was gonna be awesome. It was a brick ranch house in a good neighborhood. And we liked the idea of Vienna and it's kind of a um, outskirt to Parkersburg and just a really nice area. And we thought, man, we're just gonna kill it on this one. So we way, way overdid the house, but th this was the beginning numbers. We planned to spend, I believe 60,000 in renovations and we bought it for 85,000. We spent after, 84 years and I think three failed contractors and some legit fights on site. Like I'll never forget some of the fights that happened at that house, contractor to contractor. Those were fun. We spent 81,000 bucks, $81,654.32 in renovations alone. We also had no idea what this house was going to be worth. So when we finally got done with it, we bought it for 85,000. We thought we were going to spend 60,000 renovations. We spent 81,000 in renovations and we thought, well, it's really good product. We way overdid it. We way overfinished. We, we rehabbed things that didn't need rehab, but it was amazing. It looked beautiful. Look at the pictures. Well, we also didn't know what it was worth. So we listed it at $229,900 and I don't even know where we got that number. We just thought it sounded good, I think. And we didn't have a realtor at that time. Um, we didn't have a way of getting comparative sales. We didn't have any kind of a professional relationship that could have told us back in the day that, hey, your house is actually worth this. 
And the, the true hindsight here on that product and that house is that had we just bought it and put carpet in it and painted it, we probably could have sold it for 140,000 relatively easily and just been done and made money and moved on. But we didn't. We wanted to do the Tark and Christina job on it and that we did. So listed at $229,900, guess what happened? Crickets forever. So we started reducing the price. Check out all these price reductions. We reduced and reduced and reduced and reduced some more. And after over a year and a half, we sold that house September 19th, 2016 for $155,000. So yeah, if you're tracking the math here, it's not on the positive side. We lost after the purchase renovations and the interest to our investor, which I will tell you what they made on this deal, we lost $34,515.47. Our investor made $9,205.48 on this deal. So if you wanna know how we work with investors, as a side note, go watch videos about how we work with investors because they made money and we didn't. A little side plug. So what happened? We thought we were really, really good, right? We did two deals that netted out great. They were beautiful. And we just thought, man, we're obviously really good at this. So let's just throw gas on this thing and let's really get after it. Well, that we did and it did not work out. So I've written down the things that I think we could have done differently. Number one, we didn't understand how to vet a deal. We didn't understand how to back into a deal, which is people always say, you make your money the day you buy a house. Well, we didn't even know what the house was going to be worth when we sold it. We just knew we bought it deep enough that we could do renovations to it and still make money. So we didn't know how to vet a deal and determine the exit strategy. That was this mistake number one. And we started the project with mistake one, number one, outlying the whole thing. Number two, we renovated things that we didn't even need to fix. We way over finished the house, way over finished the product for the area and the market that it was in. Um, and we shouldn't have done that. Um, number three, we had no idea of the real selling point. So like I said, if we didn't know the sale price and we didn't know what the price of the house could be, then we, we spent more money on those finishes than we even should have because we did higher end finishes than we even needed to do, let alone mistake before that, which was finishing things we didn't even need to finish. So we, we stacked those issues. And then number four, we didn't even know what this house was worth. So we way over listed it. We didn't even price it competitively because we didn't know what it was worth. So that caused the house to sit and sit and sit and sit and it stigmatized the house. And by the time it was probably actually a deal at about 180,000 bucks, which is probably what it could have been at that point, it had been on the market so long that it wasn't a deal now to anyone. And it had been stigmatized because it had been reduced so many times that obviously there's something wrong with it, right? Because it's been reduced. So. We ended up selling it for way less than it was probably worth because we stigmatized the house because we didn't price it right. You've got to know those things going into it. Um, I'll tell you on another day about deal number four that we lost another 40 grand on. But if you do the math, we made 77,000 bucks on our first two deals and we lost it on our next two. And I will tell you what, we learn not not just financial lessons there, but we learned some really good lessons. And the takeaways that I would say that are not specific to that last deal is that I started full-time in real estate way too quick, way, way too quick. I could have run my other business and done real estate part-time on the side and naturally and grown that in a healthy manner than what we did, which is I have about 2% of the data, pretty sure it's going to work out. And we went wide open. That's how I do things. And it really cost me. So that is my story about how I got into real estate. We've been able to do over 200 deals since this. We have successfully made tons of money and we've lost some money still, but we've learned tons of lessons along the way. These deals crafted me. They really taught us that uh, you don't know as much as you think you do. You probably should learn more. You should probably pay for coaching and you should probably get better. And we did that. But that is how I got into real estate. So trial by fire is probably what I would put it as. Well, I hope you loved today's video. And as always, please subscribe to my channel. It would be a blessing to me. I'm always available if you want to reach out and ask questions about some of the things I talked about. It's a lot to unpack. I get that. I'm here to help. I'm here to teach you. I'd love to help you on your journey. So as always, come back for more content, and I'll see you on the next one.